it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Little Dragon and Tiny Fairy Tale stamp sets from Lawn Fawn. So I've stamped my images out in jet black ink on Nina Solar White cardstock and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. So I wanted to make this dragon a really dark purple. So I'm using V05, V06, and V09. And I accidentally have my caps in the wrong order there, um, but the V09 is actually the darkest. And that is what I'm using to lay in some shadows, just here and there, wherever I think they should go, along the back side of his body, the underside of his arms, and where his legs are curved forward. I also added a little shadow on the bridge of his nose to give his nose a little bit more of a pointy shape. And then I'm coming in with the V06 and beginning to blend that out. There is a large gap between that V09 and the V06. So I'm just working to scrub over the edge of that, kind of break up that line so it's not so harsh and get that color moving. I am going to go over him with a second layer though, just to help with that blend. So I'm moving on to my lightest shade, the V05, and I'm making sure to scrub in a circular motion to kind of really get those blends going. Purples are notoriously hard to blend, but this is by far the best combo that I have, um, and I use this combo often for purples, but it just takes a little extra work to get them going. You can also do a little tip to tip action like I'm doing here. I'm picking up a little bit of the V06 with that V05 marker and just blending that in the transition area to just help smooth everything out. And another trick is to do some dot detail and that is going to really help cover things up as well. So I'm taking that V09 and just in the darkest areas, I'm doing a few little dots down his back and on his legs and arms and just giving him a little bit more texture and personality. And then I'll do a few dots with the V06 as well. You just wanna make sure that your image has dried completely before you go in with the dots or else they'll just kind of fade into the background. So now I'm moving on to his belly and I'm going to be using B60, B63, B66, and B69. So I'm going to do every other stripe with the darkest three shades and then every other stripe with the lightest three shades. So for the darkest ones, my darkest shade is that B69. And for the lighter stripes, my darkest is the B66. So I'm just going to do those real quickly and blend from the left side over to the right because his arm is in front of his body, so that would be casting a shadow and his leg as well. And then I'm also going to do the spikes down his back, but this time I'm just using the darkest three markers. So I'm going in with the B69 first, and then blending with the B66, and then I'll finish those little spikes with the B63. While I have these colors out, I'm going to color the princess's ball gown. So I'm laying in that B69 once again for my shadows and then blending that out with the B66. And then I will use the B63 to finish all the over part. And then that underskirt area, I'm going to color in with the B63 and then finish with the B60. I wanted the dragon's wings to be a little deeper and duller, so I am bringing in my other favorite purple combo, which is V93, V95, and V99. So I'm laying in that V99 first, and then I will blend out with the V95, and I'll finish with the V93. And I also did the horns on top of his head with those shades as well. Once I have him finished, I'm going to do the frosting on the cake just to use that color in another area on the card so that I have a consistent color scheme. And I am using a color combo that is inspired by our current Lawn Fanatics challenge. 
so you can check that out if you'd like to play along. For the princess's skin, I'm using E000 and E00. There's very little space there, but I did decide to add in a little of the E11 because it just wasn't enough contrast for me, especially under her hairline. And then I'm going to use this combo for the bottom of my cake as well. I thought I would make her a redhead just for something different. So I'm using YR12, YR16, and YR18. So I'm adding a little bit of darkness to the tips of her hair and also to the part. And I'm going to color in part of the fire as well with those shades. And then I'll pull towards the center with the YR16 and then I will fill in the rest with the YR12. And I also did the flame on the candle off screen. Then for her crown, I'm using Y32, Y35, and Y38, and I'll also color the rest of the fire that's going to be coming out of the dragon's mouth. I colored the rest of the candle with the same blues that I used on my dragon's belly and my princess's dress. And then for the two little puffs of smoke, I used W3 and W5. And then I'm going to take a black jelly roll marker and I'm just going to get that started off on the side of the paper there and then go over the dragon's eye to make it nice and shiny. And then I will trim these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and die cut that with the large slimline with sliders die and just use the largest one for that. And I'm going to begin to blend on some Distress Oxide ink using the Cloudy Stencil. And I'm starting with Chipped Sapphire up at the top. And I am using my regular ink blending tools because I want this color to be nice and bold. The next shade that I'm using is Seedless Preserves, so I just turn that stencil to get a different formation and then I'm blending upward, allowing some of that Seedless Preserves to go up into the chip sapphire so I get a smoother transition between shades. The last color I'm using is Shaded Lilac and that is going to be my lightest shade and I'm going to just turn that stencil again so I get some different clouds and again I'm going to allow some of that ink to creep into the color above it so that it has a nicer blend and then I'm also going to add some ink down below that cloud just so it's not so stark white. And I decided I wanted to darken up that top edge even more so I'm going back in with my chip sapphire once again. Then I'll grab my Distress Sprayer and give that a couple little spritzes. Let that water soak in for a few seconds and then dab it up with a paper towel. I'm also going to take some Copic Opaque White and I'm going to add that to a small acrylic block and water that down. And then I will flick that off the edge of the block with a old paintbrush. So I get some nice little splatters and gives me the look of some stars. I'll set this panel aside to dry, and in the meantime, I'm going to work on my puffy cloud borders. I die cut two of them with the medium size border and one with the larger size, and I'm going to blend on a little bit of that shaded lilac at the very top, just where that stitching detail is to give it a nice soft haze and give it that dreamy-like quality. And I'm trying to blend on a little bit less on the cloud border that's going down at the bottom and then I'm getting a little bit more on each progressive layer. So now I'm taking my build a castle dies and I'm going to cut those out of some different colors of cardstock and I'm just holding those in place with some post-it tape. And because there are so many little fiddly bits with these dies, I'm using my magnetic die holder from Twiddler's Nook. Um, that is a shop on Etsy. It's the same place where I got my embellishment tray, which you'll see later on in the video. Highly recommend them. Their products are amazing. So I'm using that wood grain texture cardstock for the door of the castle and also for the drawbridge. I thought that would be fitting. 
and then I've got a little piece of yellow cardstock that I'm going to cut the door handles out of. You can see what I mean with those tiny little pieces. And there's a bunch more as well, but I just decided to keep my castle simple for today. So now I'm stamping my sentiment on my bottom cloud border and I'm using the one that says make a wish from the party animal stamp set and I've stamped that in juice box ink. I cut down a piece of narwhal cardstock for my card base to eight and a half by seven and then I scored it in half at the three and a half inch mark and I'm placing that sideways in my Misty so that I can stamp my sentiment in Hippo ink. And I'm using the sentiment that says, May your day be filled with adventure from the Little Dragon stamp set and then the Knight from the Tiny Fairy Tale. I'm going to adhere my focal panel to the front of my card base, just making sure that that is lined up nice and straight on all sides and corners. And then I'll press that down into place. And then I will grab my puffy cloud borders. The tallest one I'm going to adhere flat to the card. So it's going to come up almost to the bottom edge of that last cloud border that's on the background. And then I'm going to take the two other puffy cloud borders and glue them together. And I'm going to pop both of those up with some foam tape. So I've just added a bit to the back and I can peel off those release papers and I'm going to pop them up together as if they were one unit there. Now I'm ready to start assembling my scene and the first thing that I'm going to add is my castle. I added some foam tape to the back of that and I'm going to adhere my princess um, just using the bottom of her skirt to catch on that layer of foam tape so that she'll be recessed just a tiny bit back from that window. And then I'm going to use regular liquid glue on the bottom of the castle and on the back of the princess. And I'm going to tuck that into the second cloud border, the first one that's popped up there and just press that down into place. And then I've got my two little turrets here and I will adhere those down on the left and right, just making sure to match up those grooves on the top edge um, before I secure that down. So just lining that up quickly and then pressing those down into place. Next, I'm going to adhere the door, and even though it's going to be tucked behind a cloud so it won't actually be able to open, I still wanted to kind of give the illusion of it being able to open, so I kind of um, folded those back just a tiny bit, and then I only adhered the door by the outside edges. That's where I put my glue. And because these bits are so tiny, I'm also using my reverse tweezers so that I can line them up without getting my fingers in the way. And I also like to use the tips to clean up any glue that kind of splooges out the side so that my card doesn't get all sticky. So now I'm just finding the other door handle here and then using that to line it up next to the one on the left. And there you can see what I mean with the glue. It just helps me kind of clean that up and get everything um, looking as it should. Next I'll take the drawbridge and I'm going to adhere that so that it's leading right up to the front doors of the castle. Trying to cover up as much of that puffy cloud that I can there. And now it's time to decorate with these contrasting um, pieces that are die cut from the narwhal cardstock, the same as the card base. So I'll take this one and adhere that right up to the top, just making sure that it's nice and straight and lined up with all those little grooves. And then I've got these two smaller pieces that go on the tops of the turrets. So I'll just put one on the left and then the other one is going to go on the right. And like I mentioned, there are a whole bunch of other little die cuts that you can use. There are little flags and windows and window frames and all kinds of really cool stuff. 
Um, but I wanted the focus of this card to be on the dragon and the scene that's kind of taking place in front of the castle. So I chose to keep my castle pretty simple for today, but um, you could definitely add as much detail as you want. So I popped up that middle one on some foam tape just to give it a little bit more lift and also to push that princess back even further into the scene. And then I added my little dragon down in front and I'm going to add the tiny birthday cake right over in front of him. And then I've got the fire that he's breathing out to light his candle. So I'll put that near his mouth. And then I just want to make sure to line up that uh, candle image um, right so it's aligned with that flame. So I'm just going to use those little tweezers once again to make sure everything is nice and straight and that I don't have any excess glue. And then for the tiny little um, puffs of smoke, I was trying to figure out where I wanted them to go, but I just decided that there needed to be something a little bit more on the right hand side to balance everything else out. So that's where I decided to place those. So they're going to be kind of coming off and blowing away from that lit candle. I decided that this card was missing some sparkle. So I poured a little bit of the uh, liquid stardust onto a tiny block. And I'm going to mimic the look of the splatter detail that I did in the background by just kind of dabbing it in some larger and smaller dots. And this is going to really catch the light when you tip the card. And for even more sparkle, I decided to add some tiny iridescent stars. So I am dabbing the glue down with my glue tube since it has that super fine nozzle. And then I'm using my um, embellishment wand to pick those up out of my adorable embellishment tray, which is also from Twiddler's Nook. Um, that's the Etsy store that I got that magnetic dye uh, flower from that was so amazing. I highly recommend that you check out their products. They are super, super uh, wonderful and lovely people and I have really really enjoyed their products. I will have links down in the description bar to uh, their shop on Etsy and um, so I'm just going to finish filling out the card. I'm doing a few dots here and there. They're kind of hard to see um, even for myself in person so I'm just doing a few at a time so I don't forget where they are and then adding those stars right down over top. And then once I'm finished, I will grab the little bag and use the spout on the embellishment tray to funnel the rest of those tiny stars back in without any spillage. And that is going to complete my card for today. There's a look at all of that sparkle and shine. And this was a super overcast day, so it's really sparkly in bright light. And there's another peek at the inside as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed my second ever slimline card. I gotta say, I'm really liking this size. It's just something different. So if you enjoy them too, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I post new videos every Monday and Friday. And if you can't wait that long, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.